Resuming debate, the Honorable Member for Kootenai, Columbia. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to rise today to speak in favor of Bill C-224, and I want to thank my colleagues for their very impassioned plea for this bill, uh, particularly our member from Port Coquitlam. I lived in Port Coquitlam for 10 years, and I'm sure the constituents there very much appreciate this bill coming forward. Let me begin by sharing with you in the House some of the headlines from my riding of Kootenai, Columbia, in the last recent weeks. These come from the Cranbrook Daily Townsman and the Columbia Valley Pioneer, two of the many fine community newspapers we are fortunate to still have in Kootenai, Columbia. April 7th from the Townsman, the headline was East Kootenai getting eight substance use beds from Interior Health. The text, these new beds are part of a large provincial initiative to improve health care outcomes for individuals living with substance use challenges, says the province's health minister. The beds will provide a safe and supportive environment for clients who have complex substance abuse issues. A few days later, another headline, this time from the Columbia Valley Pioneer. Overdose reversal drug now available in BC without a prescription. <clears throat> The text from this one, the goal of reducing the fatal effects of an opioid overdose among the BC drug using community has recently gained momentum. Health Canada revised the federal prescription drug list on March 22nd to make a non-prescription version of naloxone, which is the life-saving antidote commonly being used to reverse the effects of an opioid overdose, more accessible to Canadians. Making the medication more accessible to people without a prescription will help to save lives. This new measure is separate from BC's Take Home Naloxone program, which has trained 6,500 people to recognize and respond to overdoses. 488 overdoses have been reversed since the program's inception. And on April 15th, back to the Cranbrook Daily Townsman for the headline, BC declares drug overdose emergency. The BC government has declared its first ever public health emergency to deal with the sharply rising cases of opioid drug overdoses across the province. There has been a steady increase in overdoses of drugs containing fentanyl, a potent synthetic opioid made in Chinese drug labs and smuggled into Canada. The emergency measure will allow for the rapid collection of data from health authorities and the BC coroner's service so that overdose treatment kits can be deployed to regions where there are new clusters of overdoses. We have to do what's needed to prevent overdoses and deaths, and what is needed is real-time information, said BC's health minister. Medical officers need immediate access to information about what's happening and where, so that they can implement effective strategies to prevent these tragedies. Mr. Speaker, we are in a crisis situation when it comes to drug overdoses and we must do everything we can to save those lives. And that is where Bill C-224 comes in. Bill C-224 would provide a good Samaritan exemption, ensuring that no evidence obtained as a result of responding to a drug overdose can be used to support possession of substance charges. This exemption would apply to any person at the scene when police or paramedics arrive. The exemption would apply to all Schedule 1, 2, and 3 drugs, all the common street drugs, but would only cover charges for possession. Production and trafficking charges would not fall under the Good Samaritan Clause. Let me say that again. The Good Samaritan exemption in Bill C-224 only applies to possession charges. Drug producers and drug traffickers will not be let off the hook. This bill will also not in any way diminish our efforts to fight organized crime, or to support communities affected by gang-related violence. Bill C-224 simply removes a barrier to medical help for reaching a person overdosing in time to save them. Now, some of the validators for this bill, the Pivot Legal Society and Canadian Drug Policy Coalition Executive Directors, and they say, fear of prosecution has proven to be a barrier for people to call for help when they are with someone who's having an overdose. Only 46% of respondents to a Waterloo Region Crime Prevention Council survey said that they would call 911 during an overdose situation. 
Seconds matter in these cases, and saving a life shouldn't be weighed against facing a potential drug possession charge. Granting amnesty to good Samaritans is a simple answer. The Liberals should move to pass this bill as quickly as possible. A Facebook user posting on Overdose Canada in support of this bill said, My son Austin would be alive today had those who witnessed his overdose called 911. Report in the Globe and Mail have been mounting signs that the illegal form of the pain-killing drug is expanding east from Western Canada, where it is linked to a surge in overdose deaths. Healthcare advocates say federal and provincial government leaders are not doing enough to address this problem. And again, to Pivot Legal Society, a three-point plan for ending overdose deaths. Research suggests that between 10 and 56 percent of people witnessing an overdose actually call for assistance. We need to remove those barriers. Mr. Speaker, the NDP has a proud progressive record of standing up for sensible drug policies that promote harm reduction and create safer, healthier communities. Supporting this bill is very much in keeping with this tradition. Mr. Speaker, Bill C-224 is about saving lives. More lives could be saved if users and witnesses didn't hesitate to seek emergency assistance for overdoses. New Democrats will always stand for smart, progressive, evidence-based policies that promote stronger, healthier, and safer communities. This bill does that, and it deserves the unanimous support of this House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate.